My question is, uh, you talk about people having 10 investment properties to justify taxing them further. I have an investment property and your policy doesn't discriminate between owning one or 10. Take away negative gearing and on my modest income, along with falling prices, and it becomes a bad investment. If you are elected, I'll be selling and probably enjoying the surplus funds over the next 10 years. I doubt I'm alone. Have you considered the cost that you'll pass on as I'll now be eligible for full age pension in the future? Thank you. Okay, thanks, George. First of all, our changes won't apply to anyone who's currently negatively geared. In other words, you can still keep claiming a loss and claiming uh, credits for the loss you make on your property investment if that's what you currently do. So there's no change. What we're saying is, on the 1st of January in 2020, new purchasers of existing housing won't be able to claim a government subsidy. You use the word tax. If I'm not giving you a subsidy for you making a loss on an investment property, that ain't a new tax. That just means you're not getting a subsidy. But in the meantime, no one who is currently negatively geared, they can still claim that subsidy. So this is a long-term change with a, with a very slow start. Let's, so let's you're not quick, getting, none of the rules well, are changing on you. Let's go back to George, who's now heard your explanation of okay. your policy. George, um, you want to stand up for us? Um, are you still, under these circumstances, considering selling your investment property if you still can benefit from it? Well, the risk is that falling price will escalate further and there's better investments elsewhere, or you could just use the surplus funds and fund your retirement through the age pension in future. So your fear is that Labor's policy will cause the acceler an acceleration in the, uh, in the lowering of house prices? Absol absolutely, because you've got all of the other, uh, I guess, taxes and charges that are coming from all layers of government, not just federal government, which are, which are kind of compounding the whole problem. OK, quick uh, answer. Well, first of all, if you want to keep your investment property and keep claiming the same subsidy from the government, you can. If you choose to sell it in the future, you'll be able to sell it in the future. You yourself just said you might put it into some other investment. That's fine. The only point of difference is not about any of your current finances, but is it right that we spend billions of dollars to give people the ability to claim a subsidy when they invest in a property in the future, or should we properly fund our hospitals and schools? It's not a zero-sum game. Their waiting lists for aged care are 130,000. We've got kids at schools not getting the resources they should. We've got our waiting lists for elective surgery in this country. So none of your current investment is affected, and by the way, if you think that the negative gearing in the future, that you won't have the chance to buy new properties and get more government subsidy for it, under this government, prices have gone down. Treasury, independent experts have said that ours will have a very minimal, if any, impact on house prices. And I also want one day for some of the kids of some of the property investors to be able to get into the housing market too. What about the young ones? If the slide became worse, and it oh. could become worse, according to some experts, would you delay the implementation of your negative gearing changes? Well, first of all, um, once you get into the hypotheticals, it's a bit unfair. Secondly, we've got a problem right now in Australia. The economy is flatlined under the current government. Wages are the low, the grow, have been growing at the lowest level in 60 years. Government's about choices. We, the last six years have not been an unmitigated success for Australia. Now, corporate profits in the last three years are up 39%, but wages have only moved 5 or 6%. Okay. We have 4 million people working in irregular or casual work. Pensioners are doing it really hard. We've seen on Four Corners tonight before coming here that you're seeing people in aged care facilities where they're rationing the sanitary pads.